Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Battletech. So, I've been flying around, uh, we'll talk about all the good things and the bad things that have happened. Uh, you, might, you might be able to see here, we are at 560 days remaining. Time has passed. Uh, but, I'm turning the camera back on a little bit before I had planned to here, because we just received a comm call from Ayasha Hadley. You might remember Ayasha Hadley as the, uh, the prisoner, the intended target of the opportunist Flashpoint. Uh, she escaped and left us looking like a bunch of assholes. And now, all of a sudden, out of the blue, she just called us up. So I thought maybe we ought to, uh, maybe we ought to handle this on camera. The comms buzz wakes you. Darius has a message, message from the planet's surface. You're not going to believe this, Commander. It's Ayasha Hadley. Commander Ballard! I feel awful about how we left things, but no hard feelings, right? I mean, I really didn't want to go to jail. Seeing your stony response, she continues, Now, I like you, Commander. You must know that. So, I just had to bring you this opportunity that could benefit us both. She continues, as if you'd agreed. You have a mech warrior in your employ who goes by the call sign Selkie. He is the spitting image of a certain Davian official who has access to a midrun research facility I'd very much like to see the inside of. Let me borrow him for a few weeks. If you play along, I'll give you one of whatever I find in there. What do you say, partners? Here's the thing about Ayasha Hadley. Uh, she almost got us into a very large amount of trouble with the uh, Federated Sons. One of our options here is to attempt to capture her and turn her over to the Federated Sons. In the time that has passed since the end of the last video, I have not managed to gain even a single point of Federated Sons rep. I flew around to every uh, system in Davian space that had a low enough skull rating to potentially generate useful missions, and none of them had any new contracts at all. We, we had already previously been to all of them, and none of them had any new contracts at all, what must be hundreds of days later. So I guess maybe new contracts don't generate on worlds in career mode. Maybe you're not incentivized to go back to the same world over and over again. Uh, we are on our way to a world in Torian space that has Federated Sun's presence on it and also a pretty low skull count. Um, so I'm hoping that we can gain some rep there. But if we were able to capture her and turn her over to, uh, to Cunningham, I think we probably would gain some rep. My concern here is that we would attempt to capture her, and somehow she would wriggle out of it again. Um, we do not have a great track record with capturing Ayasha Hadley. We could refuse to participate in her scheme. I think this is just a silly option. Uh, or we could go along with the plan. <clears throat> Here's the deal. This dude, Selkie, he's been with us for 180 days. We have never used him on a mission. He's just been sitting there, racking up time in the training simulators. Uh, we won't miss him. Right? We, we do not need this guy on staff. But, first of all, she's going to screw us somehow, right? She has to. That's just, that's just who she is. And secondly, I, I really want to, I really want to click this button. I'm just worried that um, attempting this and failing means that we get absolutely nothing out of this event. Whereas if I do this, at least I get something. Now, what are we actually going to get here? Assuming that Hadley plays straight with us, which is a crazy assumption, um, one of whatever she finds in this research facility is going to be like, at best, a double heatsink or something like that, and probably not even that good, right? There's no way this is going to be anything actually cool. Maybe, hey, maybe she will steal a bunch of battle mechs and give us one. Maybe I could get a whole mech out of this. I'm going to try to capture her. I think that this is where I'm coming down on this. Lady Alexandria Cunningham thanks you profusely as her agents slap Ayasha Hadley into restraints and march her aboard the nearby transport. I would have liked a little bit more story on how exactly we managed to pull that one off. It's not until you arrive back on the Argo that Darius asks, Commander, did you see Selkie get on board? The sinking feeling in your stomach is echoed in Darius' face. Later that week, you receive a coded message from Ms. Hadley. I'm disappointed that you didn't want to play along, Commander, but it did speed my plans quite a bit because of where Lady Cunningham decided to keep me prisoner. Temporary engagement, of course. Then don't worry about your mech warrior. I'll deliver him safe and sound, just like I promised, just as soon as I'm done with him. 
All right, well, we did get three Federated Suns rep out of that, which honestly is maybe the most valuable prize we could have uh, could have gotten. Selkie is now officially a criminal, and he will not be available to us for 30 days, which is completely irrelevant. Uh, and who knows, maybe she'll still hold up her end of the bargain, even though we definitely sent her to prison? No, probably not. We're probably not getting anything out of this. All right, well, I guess we're here. We may as well finish flying out to Mithron. So let's talk a little bit about what has happened in the... Geez, probably close to 100 days since the end of the last episode, huh? Uh, mostly nothing. I've flown around. I did the contracts that we could do at the Low Skull Worlds. Um, anything we could do without tanking our Federated Sons rep even further. But if we don't find a job or two for the Federated Sons here on Mithron that we're traveling to, uh, I'm afraid we might have to just give up on our hopes of getting, getting uh, our rep with them back to anywhere reasonable. We might just have to commit to going to negative 100. Um, another thing that happened that is cool is on one of those planets, I found a store that was selling an entire urban mech. So I bought the urban mech, and that completes our light class mechs. So we are halfway to class completion here. And as you can see, we've actually already hit the point cap for unique mech chassis. I think... Uh, without, obviously, without hitting full completion on the categories. That's because there are a couple of mech types that don't count for this stuff, but that still are unique uh, unique bodies and so count for here. Uh, in particular, the new mechs that were introduced in Flashpoint, uh, the Hatchet Man and the Cyclops, uh, both of them, uh, for us. And then also... No, I went... Okay. I thought I, could, I thought I had another one in mind, but no, I guess not. All right, so just... Let me grab the list here. So we are short one mech on the medium class. We still need to find a Centurion 9 AL. And then three mechs in the Assault class. I think it is extremely likely that we are going to get full completion. The Urban mech is the one I was really afraid we were going to miss. So that's cool. That's really it, though. Uh, it's been a very uneventful hundred days. So let's just jump over to Mithron here and see what's what. Even if... There are, uh, even if there are contracts, I probably won't record me doing them because they will be very easy. Dr. Murad, oh, so we finished our zero-g pool. You'll notice I did not start up another, um, another Argo improvement. That's because there are only two morale improvements left, and we're going to do them at the end to try to counterbalance the odds of us getting a bad morale event right before the end of the game and crashing our morale out of, uh, out of maximum scoring territory. Dr. Murad rewinds and restarts the video. The timestamp says 2.38 a.m. Seven wet, naked bodies come flying out of the new low-G pool installation and into the hall. Four women, three men, all laughing and bouncing off each other. Well, this is way more nudity than I was prepared to see this morning, Samiri says. Yang laughs. Seriously, how am I supposed to work with these people now? At this point, Samiri begins cracking up. Too true. Dr. Murad is still deadly serious. Well, Commander, what are we going to do about this? Listen... We have lived just, like, completely on the ship with these people for, at this point, two years. We have seen each other's genitals. It has probably happened. If it hasn't happened, there's some chance it's good. Like, let's just be adults about this, huh? Erase the recording. Stop being weird. Look, I'm willing to pretend that I never saw this recording. We're all adults on this ship. But to be honest, I'd rather have naked swim night than clean up blood and teeth after another fight. If this is how they want to blow off steam, so be it. Outside of maybe posting a sign that says no running while wet, let's just erase it and get on with real business. Yang and Samiri put on their serious faces and everybody nods. Darius hits a button. All done. Why did they have to bring that to me? Why was that a thing I had to be involved in? Alright, well, with that, we're morale capped anyway. Come on, Mithron, show me something really cool. It's just going to be 20 Federated Sons contracts and also... An entire Centurion 9 AL in the shop, right? Right? Uh, nope. That is a whole quick draw, which is kind of wild. Uh, a flamethrower with plus five normal damage on it. You know, that's the thing you usually use flamethrowers for, is dealing damage. Well, I guess I shouldn't be shocked that this random store has no cool stuff in it. Uh, you'll notice we have gained some Torian rep. We're up to liked with the Torians. Uh... Out of curiosity, if we were to pursue Torian Rep further... Ooh, they have a lot of enemies. They have a lot of enemies that don't particularly care for us. I guess... 
We would lose our Arana Restoration rep, but I believe that this rep is not counting for any points already. Ah, uh, you know what? Oh, yeah, actually, I think these guys don't have an Alliance Flashpoint. I believe it is the case that only the, uh, the five major factions have Alliance Flashpoints. So never mind, there's no reason for us to ally with them anyway. Alright, come on, contracts. All of my fingers are crossed. It's a terrible mess. I don't know how I'm going to recover. It's just like bones sticking every which way. Ugh. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's one. How many of these are against the Federated Sons? Hmm. Two. Three. And this one too, huh? Yep. Well. So we got to make a choice here. This is the moment of making this decision. I think I think we're just going to have to commit to the fact that we're not going to be able to work with the Federated Sons. So that being the case, do we want to break our alliance with the, the Draconis Combine, or do we maybe just want to stay allied? We won't be able to get our rep above zero with the uh, Magistracy, which already was probably not going to happen. With the... Uh, Liren Commonwealth, which totally probably was going to happen. And the Federated Sons, which obviously we're thinking about just completely tossing out. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe we just hold the Alliance so that we don't crash our Draconis Combine rep, because right now it's giving us some serious points. The Liren Commonwealth is the only place we really suffer on that. But if we have this many enemies, I'm a little worried that it's going to be hard for us to fi continue finding missions, like picking up the ability to work for uh, House Steiner would be nice. Although I guess we were talking about um, allying with the Free Worlds League too, right? And that was that's going to cap our Steiner rep at zero anyway. Yeah, I guess for right now we just keep it. Alright, well, I think that is going to be uh, it for this little bit. I will, uh, I will tack on the next time we do something interesting. Uh, to this little bit of recording. Uh, so I guess I'll see you guys in a second. And time continues to pass. 489 days remain. We have done quite a bit of flying, as you might imagine. We are now in the Alat system. Almost in the very, very corner of the map here. We've covered a lot of Torian space, a lot of Davian space... And honestly, with 489 days left, I'm looking at the map, I'm looking at the list of places we have been, and I'm thinking it is not possible for us to hit the rest of the systems. We will not be able to score uh, star system completion. But we are going to continue to visit new star systems as rapidly as possible. There's an awful lot of points left to be earned. We are going to get out into uh, open space, do a little bit more work for the Merrick, or for the uh, yeah, House Merrick for the Free Worlds League, and get ourselves up to 100 and ally with them. We do need to finish dropping rep here, but I believe we're about to do some jobs against the Federated Sons, and I'm sure we will find something to do to upset the Capellan Confederation. Um, we may or may not... I think we're going to cap with the Torians. So the situation now is, uh, here on Alat, we have an awful lot of work. Yep, five great big juicy contracts, all of them against either the Pirates or the Federated Sons. Yep, we're definitely going to drop out the bottom of the Federated Sons here. These are worth a ton of rep, and I think once we're done with this system, we do actually want to go all the way to the bottom corner here. Four and a half skulls, Hellespont, and uh, this will definitely cap us with the Torian Concordat. Also, apparently, Comstar is an active faction here. That's not correct. There are no Comstar missions. Um, and then we're going to sweep along the bottom here, get into open space, like I said. Might try to drive our Magistracy rep down to zero. According to the scoreboard, uh, Reputation Completion. We only get 10,000 points per faction for hitting 100 or negative 100 five times. So we don't have to cap reps after that in the same way, but it still is the case that the further positive or negative the bar is, the more points we get for something like this. As you can see, we're doing really well on score in a lot of other ways. 
All that's left is to keep doing difficult missions and keep flying around. So, let's do some difficult missions, shall we? We're definitely doing everything here. So that's a three and a half skull. That honestly might not even be worth doing on camera. Let's do these fours. We'll do the two fours uh, this episode and then maybe like the two fives next episode. No, no, we're going to do the three and a half. I maybe should have done this before starting to record again. I wasn't really thinking. But this is definitely the one we should do first because it has the least chance of damaging us. Well, we'll just uh, we'll ramp up into these five skulls. So within the last three months, the local pirate organization has struck our facilities. Listen, we've read all of the mission descriptions before. We know what this is. Go find this pirate lance and blow them the hell up. Uh, at three and a half skulls, the odds of us getting good loot are pretty low. I'm going to take one piece of priority salvage, though. Um, there is still one medium mech that we haven't grabbed. There's a possibility of a medium, of medium mech showing up here. Uh, we should probably, you know, at three and a half skulls, I think we can afford to run these guys. So this is sort of our, our C team. Right? We already have an A and B team worth of uh, to topped out pilots. Our C team has gotten to the place where they all have Tactics 9. So I think we're just going to go ahead and go with this. The four and five skull missions will take a little bit more seriously. But I think these guys are up to the task here. Ah, uh, you know what? I pressed that button and now I'm now I'm looking at this and I do regret it because this is a Martian biome and we don't have any cool in uh, cool inventing at all. Well, might be a lot of punching this mission. It's three and a half skulls. I don't I don't anticipate it being a problem. Oh, I did finally come up with unique names for each of our mechs and I did a little bit of building. Uh, I probably should have looked at that before starting this mission, too. It's fine. We can look at it in between. Uh, I, I kitted out that stalker. I kind of fiddled, I fiddled with a bunch of the mechs, basically. None of them in any like really seriously interesting ways, but a couple of those chassis that were sitting empty in the mech bay are no longer empty. And I do want to talk about what I did to the stalker a little bit. I'm not sure if we want to actually use it or not. All right, let's get in here and light up some pirates or... David, whatever. Get used to a place like this. Whoever shows up, we'll kill them. Location confirmed. And uh -huh. yes, I did. I did find another pilot who has Sand Cricket's voice. I missed it. I know I'm not the only one. Uh, so sheet <laughs> sheet metal here is from the same part of uh, of space, Wisconsin or Minnesota, that Sand Cricket was from. Moving out. It's a little bit more Minnesota, I think. Does Prowl have that voice, too? Hmm. Alright, listen. I know you all just saw that this mech is now named Big Swarmy, and you thought, SB, that's a terrible name. Let me explain to you... Let me explain to you what was running through my mind here. So I wanted... This is the other grasshopper, right? The machine gun grasshopper. I wanted a name that was going to be about the guns... To kind of keep the theming up, right? Because the name Grasshopper is about which guns he have, he has, what separates him from the other Grasshopper. So I wanted this one to be like that too. And I thought, you know, uh, this mech is a Grasshopper in the line of the Locust and the Cicada. And the machine gun bullets are sort of like a swarm of annoying gnats that he fires at you. So he's the, he's the swarm, right? But then I thought I thought two more things. First of all, the name The Swarm doesn't really communicate to you uh, what's going on with his general physical height and his legs especially. He's a very big mech. And secondly, uh, the Swarm is a comic book character, uh, a spy sort of a Spider-Man villain, who I'm pretty sure is a Nazi or is very pro-Nazi, and I'm just not down for that at the moment. So I decided to add a little bit there. Uh, no possible confusion. So welcome, Big Swarmy. Uh, Eric the Red, of course, was already named. Our crab, our king crab is called Glass Jaw, hopefully for obvious reasons. I think it's very fitting. And uh, Flatline here piloting the Atlas, which is now named Kazaganthi. Because I was trying to think of, like, who's the best sort of big guy cartoon character. You know, yes, the big powerful oaf. That's a very common, uh, very common archetype in fictional characters. And being okay. exactly the stripe of nerd that I am, I thought, hey, Kazaganthi from the Dragonlance setting. That's the best big guy I can think of. I don't even think people who like Dragonlance mostly know who that character is. Um, we just take his head off? We could just take his head off. Maybe. Eh, he's got Bulwark up. 
So with him having Bulwark, we're going to do uh, 40%. It's like 22 damage with each of these big lasers, which means I'd have to hit his head three times. Yeah, let's just core him. Should be real easy, right? 190. I don't know if we'll do it with this shot, Target but we'll locked. certainly set it up. Oh, awful lot of stuff going to the arms there at the end. Reporting critical hit. That's all right. I think we probably will be able to figure it out. Somehow we shall suffer through. I'm seeing a lot of like 60 and 65s. Unfortunately, that makes me think that we're probably not very likely to see our Centurion. Waiting for orders. Hmm, what do we want to do here? I don't really want to run the... I don't, I don't want to spend the crab's turn just yet. I do want to have a reasonable chance of killing this guy, though. He has a lot of health left. If the PPC hits center... That's only going to do 30 damage, isn't it? Well, shoot. Maybe I just reserve down. I don't really want to do that. I was kind of hoping we'd get a little bit more center torso damage out of the grasshopper. Standing by. Yeah, all right. Let's just commit the crab. Let's commit that big glass jaw. Ah, that's a shame. Gauss shot to the center would have uh, would have really helped us along. I've been since a lot. It would have been lethal. He would have died if we did the center. You, Commander. No, Prowl does not have the same voice. She has kind of a similar voice, sort of. Alright. Please center. Nope, that's not center. That, was that a leg? Did you shoot his leg? What are you doing? I'm gonna spend all of my pilots shooting at a damn griffin. Is he a griffin? Was he? It's a wolverine. Whatever. Same difference. It's basically the same mech. Prove it isn't. You can't. Oof. Bad shooting, everybody. Just real... Just real sloppy work. <laughs> really crappy job. Alright, well... His guns are at least all screwed up. Not that they were much of a threat in the first place. So one of the, uh, one of the major things I did was go around and redesign the ammo storage locations of a bunch Standing of by. the mechs. So we had a lot of mechs that were, um, a lot of older mechs that didn't have their ammo stored very intelligently, and I wanted to fix that problem. Alright, I know that heat's going to be a serious issue here, but... First of all, I want to get vision of everything so I know what we're actually dealing with here, and secondly, I want to use the machine guns on this guy to finish him off so we can turn off a bunch of the medium lasers. He only has 26 center torso health. Well, actually, I'm going to turn off all the medium lasers. We're going to lose heat this turn. Affirmative. This should be more than enough weapon. You do the job. The missiles are going to get us most of the way there. Target eliminated. Okay, that's nice. I almost wish I had brought the grass hotter, though. Because, man, in the Martian atmosphere, it's real easy to heat shut down an enemy mech. So you have a whole bunch of evasion doing that grasshopper thing you do. This Jaeger mech, on the other hand, is in no kind of state to withstand the thing I am about to do to him. You can really feel, though, the difference. These pilots don't all have ten gunnery. I'm having some terrible luck with these, uh, with these precision shots. Not as precise as we would like. And, of course, we're fighting the one model of Jaeger mech that doesn't keep ammo in the center. On my way. Yep. Oh, that sucks. Can I... I can get away with turning off that. That's probably better. Ah, damn it. I was just thinking the, uh, the potential damage focusing effect of getting that PPC in center. Would have been real big. Would have been very useful there. Well, this is why I wanted to jump into cover. What do you need? I suppose we ought to try to finish the job. Although apparently I can't get a shot into his frontal arc. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty non-ideal. His uh, his right his right side's real strong. 
And I can't get any reasonable shot on the dragon. Yeah, alright, we'll just take the kind of bad shot here. Targeting for an alpha strike. I'm expecting that this is not the whole mission. Okay, there we go. Yeah, they got an extra lance over there somewhere. I've got eyes on hostile reinforcement. That makes sense. Heading your way. Let's see, these four mechs all together are not really three and a half skulls worth of difficulty, are they? Oh, you all have uh, you all have long range direct fire weaponry, huh? Yep, every single one of you. Barely hit, Commander. Even after all that, pretty barely. Of course, they had enough weapons to strip all of the evasion charges. I'm taking heavy hits, Commander. Let's make it happen. Alright, so what we really need here is to... How much, how much health do you have? 37? That's a shame. What we really need here is to compromise their vision, right? Try to get myself in a position where they don't really have the ability to shoot at us with all those mechs anymore. Unfortunately, that's not going to be a thing we can do super quickly. I'm going to fire as many weapons as I can here, and we're going to not precision strike. Target confirmed. I don't need a lot of center torso hits here. There we go. Almost every one of those weapons hit the left torso instead of the center, but it was enough damage that it got there anyway. Okay, going out of their way to make sure that the grasshopper remains an available target. I hear you. Uh, let's have Eric the Red fire on the grasshopper first. This is mostly just to remove evasion. Oh, you know what? I have sensor lock. This is a way more effective way to do that. I've got a sensor lock. Try to make the king crab's shot as lethal as possible. Man, stupid Martian biome. Really? That sucks. Get to fire almost nothing. I copy. Okay. Good solid Gauss rifle hit, though. Managed to get through to the structure. Yeah, well, that's not ideal. Good news is the Atlas is. F hey, hey, move forward. What are you doing? The Atlas has range to at least fire its weapons now. You know what? I guess I have precision strike. May as well use it. So we'll be able to break their line of sight soon. Not this turn, but soon. Yeah, I could turn off some more stuff, but I'm really worried the AC 20 is not going to end not going to hit the right location because a lot of our stuff has been missing the aimed location. That's a kill. And unfortunately, they're all just going to keep shooting at the uh, grasshopper. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to put it in a position with all these um, stone spires and everything where they just wouldn't have a shot on it. But I wanted to stay in the frontal arc of the Jaeger mech, so. Fortunately, most of them seem uninterested. It's working out really well, actually. Hot damn, let's do this! Yes, Commander. Alright, now, I'm not going to be able to get the shots I want. But, this guy only has 160 back center health. Moving out. Let's see how many weapons I can fire into his back center. Can I turn on one of the small lasers? I cannot. Alright, this is technically enough damage, but I don't... We'd have to get a very tight grouping here. Target lock on enemy's rear. 
Yeah, I certainly can't have a whole laser miss. Up to about 36. That is a real, uh, real crying shame there. The good news is that we pushed him down to initiative two to go before him a whole bunch. The bad news is I'm not going to be able to shoot him with most of my weapons on account of heat. Don't need to tell me twice. Yeah, man. Ready for orders. Really, really don't get to fire a lot of weapons. And then he's just going to sensor lock the grasshopper again. Uh, I sensor lock him, I guess. The Cyclops getting targeted with the long range weapons is definitely not ideal. Yep. So we do have Precision Strike available here. I could go for one. I'm kind of thinking I'm just going to sprint though and let myself recover. Dragon himself is not terribly dangerous. If I ran to here, I'd have really good hit chances. Hmm. Realistically, though, what am I going to be able to shoot? Yeah, just the AC. Yeah, it's not worth it. Not worth it. Heat is too high. Acknowledge. Fortunately, they are uh, eager to take the bull by the horns, so to speak. Here, light damage, commander. Works out fine for us. Please, everybody, take turns shooting at the Atlas. Depending on what the dragon does, we might be able to get another back shot with the grasshopper. And if we can, we definitely kill it, right? Oh wow! In for the punch. They're blowing through my armor. Well, that's Retreat. annoying. Commander. Affirmative. Let's just finish this. Firing at enemy six. Hot damn, let's All right. do this. That will be their vision. Target eliminated. Yeah, that's not so much damage that we necessarily even need to go to a repair, but I might I might spend a day repairing, just be on the safe side. We can certainly reserve down here. They're going to be able to get vision of us. I don't know that they'll be able to get vision of the grasshopper. But that uh that mech that jumped close. Think should be able to make it over the ridge, maybe not. Waiting on you, Commander. Let's have you maybe even back up. But when I back up that far, well, I can I can still sensor lock this guy. Sensors locked on. Orders. All right, the thunderbolt. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do here is just run forward again. All right, full speed. I think it makes a lot of sense for me to fire at a guy who has that much damage reduction. Uh, commander. I need to do the same thing here. Just walk up there and brace. Move into position. Need a little time to Standing resolve by. our heat situation anyway. Alright, so we reserve down, let them come to us. We all have cover positions now. That thing is packing some fairly serious missiles. Is that a Jaeger mech? Aye, aye. Probably. Honestly, I think we just reserve again. They're going to move forward and fire at us, and then we're going to get two turns in a row to fight back. I'm under heavy fire here. Everybody except for the Atlas. 
um, gets to move on three, right? Hmm, he's gonna get knocked over. That's not great. I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal because he's gonna get right back up. Okay, he stays standing. So yeah, we holding. We have two turns in a row with every one of our max. Many of us are at reasonable heat levels. Not all, not all of us, but many of us, and they're all exposed and weak. So let's uh, let's break some stuff. I'm definitely more worried about the Jaeger mech than I am about any of the others. Let's turn everything back on. Go center. This is one of the ones that doesn't store ammo in its torso. Okay. Didn't exactly get the shots I was looking for there, but... Yes, Commander. As a Ganthi just deals an overwhelming amount of damage. What some might call an unreasonable, unfair amount of damage. Uh, you know what, you're not next. So these are both five SEs. Exact same build. Uh, you have fewer points of evasion. That actually does matter with this squad. Everything I, got. I really like the hit effect on the Gauss Rifle. I feel like it looks cooler than it used to. Not really based on anything, that's why I said I feel like I may I may just not be remembering that it looked cool before. I certainly didn't go back to check. Okay. One down. Gotcha. Commander. So they're probably not gonna have much left in the way of uh, On the move. In the way of vision by their next turn. No retreat. No Good retreat indeed. Of course, we are already at the point where we're overheating again. Roger that. Oh, you're kidding me. That's unfortunate. Aye, aye. All right, so we dropped him down to one. I'm going to, at this point, reserve. I wanted to knock him down to one. We can let the other guy go here. Pretty sure the Atlas doesn't even move. I think we just go straight for this guy's center and turn off a couple of things here. Target confirmed. Okay. That's a kill. At this point, if you're the Jaeger mech, it is not at all unreasonable to just put your mech hands up in the air aye, aye. and uh, and wave them desperately. Like you really, really care. Most of the time, uh, a DJ will tell you to do it like you don't care, but that would be a bad thing to do in this situation because you you should be demonstrating to me that you care about survival. I hear ya. Let's have Eric the Red fire first, just to knock a point of evasion off this guy. And I mean, we're trying to deal damage, obviously, but tell me what to shoot. That is not the most. Important. I could have just sensor locked and pulled both his points of evasion, but I do really want to get some damage order. on him. In particular, I'm thinking stability damage, although we did not end up doing very much. You know what? I'm just gonna sprint. Come on, people, let's make it happen. Now I get to do this. Very important to manage your initiative order. No retreat. Okay, that wasn't so bad. We actually took structure damage, which is embarrassing. But yeah, overall, not so bad. So like I said, I do want to talk about mech builds a little bit. Mostly what I want to talk about is the Stalker. Uh, I tried outfitting that Banshee as best I could. You're going to see... Uh, it's a real disappointment. <laughs> I don't I don't think the strategy has a lot of life to it. Uh, so I don't need any of these. Is there any any really cool stuff here? That's a pretty good large laser. 
No plus 10 damage medium lasers, which honestly at this point are one of the most valuable things we can find. I could also I could have just attempt to finish a mech. The cell pretty well. And I think we actually have these in every large laser slot. These are not nearly so rare, and also you really don't need a lot of large lasers in your life. So yeah, I'll take a piece of a mech here. Alright, they also gave me the grasshopper. The price difference between a 65 ton mech and a 70 ton mech are... it's not huge. It didn't really matter what mech pieces we took there. I guess the grasshopper was at 2 of 3. It was probably right to grab the grasshopper. Whatever, we got it. Everything turned out okay, and that means... That's the same thing as my plan having been correct, right? If everything turns out okay, then you certainly don't need to do any kind of introspection or analysis of your own actions. Can't imagine why you would. Thanks for telling me about what a grasshopper is, Yang. Okay, so, mech bay. Like I said here, I'm not wild about the banshee design I came up with. Uh, here's the thing. This banshee has a lot of support hard points and also a lot of energy hard points but trying to balance the relatively small amount of available space against mounting enough lasers to be like really powerful but also having enough heat sinks to actually survive firing those lasers turned out to be a really a pretty frustrating challenge so i decided to not do it instead uh, mount the maximum amount of jump jets Loaded up with small lasers and then some other weapons it can use while it's approaching and just punch the hell out of stuff It melees for a hundred and ninety with an additional hundred and fifty damage worth of small laser fire uh, The melee attack does a huge amount of stability damage It does a lot of DFA damage and remember the support weapons do fire on DFA attack Will we ever use this thing? Probably not, but this was the best I could do with it. Honestly, I don't think Banshees are very good. Guys out here throwing haymakers, hence his extremely imaginative name, Haymaker. Also, using him at all is kind of a haymaker. Sort of a, sort of a Hail Mary of punches. Alright, but let's talk about, well, hold on, one more thing. Uh, the other King Crab, I was like, what else could I, what could I do with this that wouldn't make it just the same mech? Because, um, first of all, we don't really have the missiles for the same mech again. A big part of what makes this King Crab good is that it has plus two damage on almost all of its missiles. We don't have a lot of plus two damage missile launchers. So here I went for more of a stability damage focus. Uh, plus 30 stability damage PPC, Gauss rifle, plus stability damage missiles in every other slot. I don't know, probably, probably we'll never use it. Now the Stalker. One thing that a lot of people use a Stalker for, I am led to understand, and it makes perfect sense, is as an LRM bow. You see it has four missile hard points, same as the King Crab, but uh, they're on different parts of the body. There's one in each arm and one in each uh, side torso, which means you actually can put four LRM 20s in there. That's compelling. Um, it's not a huge amount better than the King Crab we have now because I only have one plus damage LRM 20, but I thought, uh, I think, I think I mentioned this at the end of the last episode. What if we built it a little bit more like the Grasshopper, given the uh, the set of hard points it has, but a little bit more shotgun -y. So, uh, So that's what I ended up with here. And I think it has some interesting potential. First of all, the damage output of this thing is very silly. It's only mounting uh, a couple fewer normal laser weapons than the Grasshopper. So it's going to be a little bit worse at... Uh, at headhunting, but not a huge amount worse. You can see here, we didn't have enough plus 10 damage medium lasers for me to mount on it, so it's got some that are not totally ideal. If we decided we wanted this thing to take over the grasshopper's roll, obviously we could just roll out the other, uh, the other 10 damage lasers into this. But look at this, even without optimal, uh, weapons, 493 damage. And... It's considerably heavy, heav more heavily armored than the Grasshopper is. Uh, and it deals a lot of stability damage when it attacks. It still has um, really good heat sinking. 
obviously not going to be able to alpha strike with this thing all the time in the same way that we can't with the grasshopper but it has a comparable amount of heat sinking so those turns when we can't um, the heat is really going to bleed off this thing is however a little bit slower so i maxed out the jump jets it does have the ability to jump for 120 so it doesn't jump as far as the grasshopper jumps but it does jump as far as the grasshopper walks um i'm not sure if this mech is going to work at anything less than the grasshopper's speed. That's my main concern. I think this mech is a better fighter than the grasshopper is. It does more damage while being considerably tougher. Uh, there's extra structure and extra armor in every location. But... I just don't... I don't know if... Like, the grasshopper is often just barely able to get in range... Well, it's barely able to get an op optimal range, but optimal range for the grasshopper is actually closer than optimal range for this thing is. Basically, I'm not sure if I want to use this mech at all or not, because it might just not be well suited for the task. But that's a lot. It does a lot of damage, and a lot of stability. How much stability damage is it? It it alphas for 96. And keep in mind, uh, this is not that much higher. This is like 90 points higher than the grasshopper's listed. Alpha, but the Grasshopper's listed Alpha is reliant on being able to fire its, like, 90 damage worth of support weapons. So it actually does have to be closer in order to work. And this thing does at least have a large laser, for when we're a little further back. I don't know. I'm pretty torn about it. For now, I think let's go in with just the normal squad. Do one of those four skulls, and then we will adjourn for the day, and I will have a good think on this. I think I'm just gonna... I think we're gonna just roll right into this. I don't think I'm gonna spend the day repairing. It's only 10 armor. It's the left arm, which has... I mean, yeah, stuff that's not, like, super important in it. I'm gonna push it in the interest of saving time, because time is finite. Uh, let's decapitate somebody. That sounds fun. I had confirmation from several sources that the leader of an insurgent cell backed by the local pirate organization is in the open. Let's steal his excellent mech. So... Doesn't actually say mech, though, does it? Hmm... I could swear that we had one assassinate where the leader was a vehicle. But probably not at this difficulty level, right? So I'm gonna take this as... I guess we'll take it as 2-8. A lot of the assault mechs that we still have uh, yet to pick up for class completion, we have at least one part of. In fact, that might be the case for all of them at this point. So we're going to bring the same mechs. We're going to bring the actual A-team pilots, especially those who have coolant vents. It's going to be a big, big part of our strategy here in this horrible, horrible biome. Uh, so Centurion is... Man, do I want her in the grasshopper? Do we need that vent? Let's take... Probably Saber. Saber's gonna be important here. Maybe Saber in the Grasshopper. Razor in the... In the Kazaganthi for the sensor lock and everything. He does glass jaw and then... It's a little... Maybe I want somebody with cool invent in the glass jaw because it really was overheating a lot. Yeah, maybe it's Hellebore instead. No breaching shots, kind of a shame. Maybe Hellebore just drives this. Yeah, I'm going to do it this way. I know, I know. So it's an assassinate mission at four skulls. I am uh, simultaneously concerned and hopeful that we may see something very large from the opposition. I mean, so far, every assassination mission that we've seen, the mech that we are sent to assassinate is like a couple skulls of difficulty higher than all of the other things around it. Obviously, here they can't quite do that, because... They only get so big. But, I mean, I'd be very surprised if the uh, assassination target was not 
90 to 100 tons, right? It has to be. I actually hope it's not 100 tons, because we really don't need a 100 ton mech. Or we really don't need a 100 ton salvage anymore. Now we still need, um, I actually don't have the list up already on the other monitor, but I know we still need pieces of the awesome, oh, we need one of the Highlander builds still, right? 733P, I think. Well, hopefully it'll be that then. All right, we know the deal here. Stay frosty. There's going to be two squads of enemy mechs. The leader is all the way over there, and both of the squads of mechs are on that side, so... Maybe this is one where we go straight for the leader? A little awkward. We're definitely going to become visible to these guys. We try to go over this. I don't think that's going to happen. Not all of our mechs can jump. Acknowledged. You may have noticed, though, that a lot of the new assault designs are uh, jump jet heavy. This looks like an ideal place for an ambush. I don't think we should try to go back and install more jump jets in our crab or atlas, but I do think that it really sucks not to have jump jets. Roger that. Hostile on. Roger that. Man, look at like just the raw mobility Copy that. of the good mech, of the good pilots. It's so nice. All right, so there's an awful lot of vehicles here. Yes, Commander. Probably a good thing for us. All right, if I jump to right here, I get vision of all of them. That's probably a good idea. Maybe a little dangerous. But we want to be able to kill them quickly. So there's a 60 ton over there. Demolisher, PBC carrier, SRM carrier. Okay. Well, SRM carrier is pretty soft. And definitely a serious threat. PPC carrier moves on two, which means if I don't take it out right now, it could go before the rest of us. How much how much health does it have? 105 or 120. Alright, I can take that thing. So if I just fire like this, we imagine that the damage spreads pretty evenly. Um, yeah... If we imagine that the damage spreads pretty evenly over the four regions that we can hit, front, side, side, and turret, we don't get there. If we imagine that the damage splits pretty evenly over three areas, because the turret doesn't get hit all that often, right? If we imagine the damage spreads pretty evenly over three areas, we end up with probably like 105 to each of them, which... Yeah, I think we probably have to precision strike here. I was hoping to save it, but I don't think we get this thing without the precision strike. I don't think we're anywhere near guaranteed to get it. Which means that we're going to have a hard time killing the demolisher. Enemy vehicle eliminated. Yeah, but of course the millions of off-screen enemies are going to strip all of the grasshopper's evasion, so... That AC-20 shot's very likely to connect. Pair of AC-20 shots. Roger. Alright, here we just hope. If these both hit the same location, the thing just dies. Nope. We <laughs> somehow I hit opposite sides. Doesn't even really make sense. And they can all see this. <clears throat> it's all direct fire. Damage is light. You see, situations like this are where I'm thinking, like, maybe the, uh, maybe the Stalker would be a good play. Waiting for orders. Yeah, it sucks that we don't have direct fire on that thing. Alright, so we're gonna split them up. Come on, PPC, just hit one of the two damage zones. Okay, I got a lot of damage on that thing's side armor. Yes! Alright, that was very lucky. Vehicle crash. So who knows? Maybe, we'll, maybe we will be able to get the demolisher here. Alright, I do believe that's my last point of evasion. Well, I'd better get this demolisher. How's it going?
Yeah, there's no... Yeah, there's no position from which I can get a, uh, a direct fire on the Demolisher. Well... Do I want to fire the Gauss Rifle? I have the option. Heading out. Ricochet doesn't have any heat uh, management, but the Gauss Rifle is only 5 heat. Yeah, sure. Alright, we just kinda... Oh, actually I have Precision Strike. Yeah, we dealt just enough. We killed just enough enemies. Oh man, but I don't... This is still busted, right? exactly understand how. Alright, so... I'm a little worried that I'm going to end up sending it all just into the front, which is not really where we want it to be. If I target the front, it'll push it off to one of the sides? Firing. Is that how we determined it worked? Yep, yeah, pretty much. We actually destroyed both of the sides. Very, very little damage to the area we aimed at. Well, good. <laughs> Let's say 90. Is that the right weight for a Highlander? Maybe. Hit him hard. Okay, well, I think it is time for you to back way the hell up. No, 80. Okay, it could be an awesome, potentially. Although I don't know if any awesomes use the loadout of weapons we just saw. No, I think he just jumps back. His right side is kind of screwed up. Got it. Just back off here and brace. Enjoy the bulwark. There's something to be said for the strategy of killing the target quickly and then getting out. But what if I fought with all of his reinforcements? What if I did this in the way that is most beneficial and most according to his plan? What then, smart guy? I copy. Alright, let's just put him away. Come on, AC20. Taking the shot. Well, at least it connected. I was pretty worried that it wasn't going to. Take that. 40 left seems very doable. I think we can probably figure that one out. I'm going to say I'm unimpressed with the bigness of the mechs on this assassinate mission. I really thought they were going to have a little bit more going for yes, them. Commander. Okay, i got to take the obstructed shot to get the frontal arc. Uh -huh. Let's just give him everything. Target Probably this is overkill. Right. Yep, it turns out Gauss Rifle to the left torso was lethal. So I really didn't need to fire everything there. Commander. Okay, I'm going to reserve that. Hold them for the right opportunity. Trying to get them to come forward to a place Ready where I can shoot at them. On my way, double time. This does leave the Cyclops in the open a little bit, which I'm not wild about. All right, we have most of our weapons available on that. I don't get to fire at all if I don't jump, so... On it. it is a Zeus, which we do not need. And it has Bulwark, and yeah, it's just generally like a real huge pain in my ass. Well... And I don't want to precision strike it. I might just brace, honestly. I want to go after it, ideally. Yeah. So now they have vision, but I have bulwark and a bunch of evasion and my left side toward them. I think we should be okay. Standing by. Now that we have vision, we are considerably more dangerous. But I want to reserve down till after him, right? For my right, I totally remember what I was doing.
And really? Armor breach. Internal damage. Well, the grasshopper is definitely going in for repairs after this one. Receiving you. Hmm. Well, Eric the Red definitely cannot afford to get any closer to the other enemies here. So I'm not even going to bother precision striking center because it's probably not going to be meaningful. Well, this is 140 damage, I suppose. And the Atlas isn't really going to get to shoot. So both of them missing guys can just try to aim center. Orders. Go get this knockdown. And the grasshopper should be able to finish him off quite easily next turn. Knocking on target. Man, I couldn't even get through the armor, really. All that fire. If my pilots knew shame, I would expect them to be ashamed of themselves. Aye, aye. Alright, so what we have here is an Orion and Thunderbolts. Well, the Orion's the only one I have the center on. Not actually that easy to kill him through the center, but... A lot of damage to work with. Or we could just go for... I guess I don't get a real shot on anybody. Yeah, I guess let's do this. Okay, those both hit the torso instead of hitting the arm. That's pretty good. A little worried about the darkness of my torso armor there. Oh, only 99 armor left. Maybe I'm not... Uh, maybe I'm not... That worried. Maybe I don't need to be that worried. On my way. Keep my left arm toward everybody else. 145 damage. We should be able to get there. Confirmed. That looks pretty good. Okay, we That's could just leave, kill. I suppose. Doesn't seem like there's any good reason for us to flee and lose some of our pay, though. But I guess the Atlas is kind of getting beaten up. Standing by. Yeah, all right. I think I can On get this. Way. Just barely in that front mark. Good. Acknowledged. God, look at how much better he is at managing Firing heat. On target. Think I hit something good. Yeah, alright. That was sort of helpful. Yes, command. If we can just fire into that arc of it, uh arc on that side of him. With the uh, with the Atlas. That will mean that we probably don't have to use a precision strike to finish him off. Or, never mind, actually it doesn't matter. He's going to be knocked down, so... I wonder if the grasshopper's too far away to be able to pull a shot on him. Oh yeah, almost certainly, huh? That was a pretty serious leg shot. I can't take much more of this. <coughs> Good to go. Fortunately, there's a... Oh, yeah. We actually do have range. Fortunately, there's a significantly non-zero chance that that was that Orion's final shot. Target eliminated. Ah, oh, this thing is good at its job. Ready for orders. Just a little bit too far away to get, uh... Aye, aye. Get a melee attack off. Let's just go ahead and do this. And then, this guy is completely pristine. Do I want to try to just roll the dice on the headshot? Because this is a lot of health to get through. Now, you know, if anybody can do it, it's Kaz again. Kill confirmed, Commander. 
Yep, turns out he can, in fact, do it. He the mech, not he the pilot, because obviously. Uh, and then they're going to make me actually walk to the e -back, so. I copy. That's a crappy thing to do to an assault lance with no jump jets in it. Aye, aye. Copy that. Got it. You got it. Roger that. Acknowledged. See, the thing is... Roger that. In previous okay, instances of this happening, I've said, oh, you know, it's it's kind of interesting because it keeps the suspense up. You're like, I don't know, is the mission over? Is the mission not over? And that was true for a while, but now that I've seen it do this enough times, I'm, like, reasonably sure that we don't have to worry about the, another Lance suddenly showing up or anything. Mission successful. So now that the drama has been pulled out of it, it's just kind of annoying. It's just kind of annoying that it makes me walk two whole turns. How dare it? My time is so precious, right? So unbelievably valuable. Alright, yeah, the grasshopper definitely needs a day off. That's some, um, you know, we gotta do some spot welding, no big deal. Plus two stability damage, LRM 15 is kind of interesting. Uh, I will take that, it turns out we need more of those. Yeah, not really a lot of great stuff here. Turns out. Alright, well, let's take the uh, Thunderbolt part, complete another mech. Anything we can sell. Anything we can sell is valuable. So each time we do a mission, we get 50 points for each half skull in the mission difficulty. We also get points for any sea bills collected, and we also get points for increasing positive reps and decreasing negative reps. So each one of these missions we're doing is making us a, a reasonable number of points. Not incredible, but like, even just the difficulty stars is going to be a couple hundred, or the difficulty skulls rather, it's going to be a couple hundred, right? So our score does continue to climb. Uh, we have three big contracts left on this uh, left on the system, and then we are going even further into the corner of no man's land because it's very important to us that these bull people like us. I'm not I'm not really sure why. Or what the what the arbitrary score represents, but it seems to be very important to us. That is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time. Apparently, we're going to do a couple of five skull missions, and we'll see you then.